morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me for another one of our Tuesday Facebook Lives. I need to take a deep breath. We've had kind of a wild morning here, and I don't know if you remember, but a few weeks ago I talked about taking a daily sketch and watercolor class, and what the instructor does at the very beginning of the class is she has us close our eyes, put our hands on our shoulders, breathe in, out slowly, feeling our body, blah, blah, blah. That's what I need to do this morning. So I'm taking a deep breath so that I can be calm and talk to you today. I want to start by showing you some new fabrics that just came in. Every once in a while we get these Japanese fabrics that just drop in here. And I forget what I order because it takes so long for things to come from Japan. And I order them so many months ago that when it comes in, it's just a delightful surprise. And they sort of dribble in here. You know, I maybe order 20 bolts of something and four come in. So I'm going to show you the five that came in this week. And they are really, really interesting fabrics. So this is pure linen, a lightweight linen. And it has this board. So start over. We're good, sorry. That's all right. We a little glitch. Um, did they hear any of it? We're going to start over. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, in the previous one minute that I talked, I talked about how it had been kind of a wild morning, and it has been. So now we're all hooked up with all the microphones, and everybody's hearing everything, and welcome. I want to talk to you about a few of the fabrics that we just got in from Japan. I order these fabrics, and they take so long to come that I forget what I order. And so when they drop in here three or four at a time, it's just so much fun to see them because they're, first of all, beautiful. We don't get very many yards of them, so they kind of fly out of here. But I just wanted to show you this week's treat of fabrics. So this is linen, a lightweight, shirtweight linen. And it looks like the watercolor class that I'm taking every day, although I don't do it every day. But I am getting into my... my uh, watercolors. What is it about an obsession? You know, sewing, you know, we have to have all the stuff. Well, now I'm into watercolor. Now I have to have all the brushes and the papers, but that's another story. At any rate, this has this beautiful border that looks like it's been hand painted with some uh, met slightly metallic. It's not really super shiny, but this beautiful uh, addition of gold. But the base of the fabric looks like it's been brush stroked with some soft pastels. Beautiful linen. We have a cotton also in pink that also has a border. So remember on these wovens, you can cut these on the cross grain so that if you want this border to be at the bottom of something, you can cut something on the cross grain and generally, not always, but generally you can get more out of less yardage when you're cutting on the cross grain. So another one of these sort of watery, sort of hand-drawn fabrics. Beautiful, very lightweight. This is the smoothest cotton that I have felt in a long time. Really gorgeous. This is another lightweight linen in this stunning Mediterranean blue. This reminds me of Greece. I've never been to Greece, but when I see pictures of certain places in Greece, you see this beautiful turquoise color with white and a little bit of metallic, and that's what this is all about. So this is like someone threw some paint on this fabric, although there is a floral-esque motif to it. But again, very lightweight, handkerchief weight linen. This one's going to be a little bit hard for you to see. There's actually a texture to this. Now, I'm an old Kansas State graduate in textiles, and I used to know all of my fabrics and what they were called, but I don't know what this is called. The backside of it is smooth, but the face of it has a little tiny, tiny little raised diamond to it. So it just gives it a little bit of a grip or a texture. But again, a watercolor-looking fabric. And this time, more of a double border. And I don't know that I would really call that a border, but definitely it changes character at the edges. And then one that really is different than these, but really fun, is a polka dot. Now, I know that Betsy, who's sitting off camera and um, 
watching this is going to love this because it's polka dots and she's all over polka dots and she's all over green but you can see that there are these splatterings of color but orange on this side blue on the other half so that's sort of something that happens with a lot of these Japanese fabrics is they change from edge to edge. And I think that's what's interesting about them. They call this a canvas. It is not a canvas. It's just a little bit of a heavier cotton and would make uh, great pants or a shirt or a bag or anything like that. So that's what's new in the door this week that's fun from Japan. All right, so to, to get on topic today, um, I have to talk to you about my husband. My husband's a big guy. And in the old days, when he was wearing suits and ties and maybe just dress pants and shirts to the office, he would go to Chicago once a year, and I would usually go with him so he could see a baseball game. But he would buy his four pairs of pants and his six shirts at a place called Rochester Big and Tall, which used to be on Michigan Avenue. Well, I would go along, and as he's buying his navy and gray and black, I'm looking at all the really interesting shirts. And I ran into a designer who made shirts called Robert Graham. That's his name. And these shirts were so interesting. The details were like nothing I'd ever seen on shirts. And so I came back and decided that I would write an article for Threads Magazine about, actually the article was called Gender Bender. And the shirt ended up on the cover of Threads Magazine. And the article is all about how to add some interesting details. So I'm going to show you the shirt. And then there's also a whole art, a section of the article on how to make a double cuff. This is issue number 150. It's been a while, but for those of you who collect your threads or have the DVDs, you can find it. And actually, if you go to threadsmagazine.com and just put in Linda Lee, all of the articles that I've written over the years are there. And it's a nice uh, sort of index. The other thing that popped up was a little tutorial that you can download for free on that Threads Magazine site. And this is called Spruce Up Your Shirt Hem. It's just a quick little tutorial on another little technique that I'm going to show you. But there was a while there where I was making a lot of shirts and adding all of these Robert Graham details and really having a lot of fun. So this is the shirt that was on the cover of Threads. And it's in a woven cotton shirting. So this is not a printed stripe. But I'm just going to point out some of the details that you can add to your shirts or blouses, or anything actually. But Robert Graham always has contrasting stands and under collars. The cuffs, the insides of the cuffs are a contrasting fabric. If there's a vent, a placket, that's in another contrasting fabric. There's always some embroidery, just a little bit of embroidery on the inside of the overlap. This says create, inspire, and discover, and that's machine embroidered. A little bit of machine embroidery, again, on the underlap, right below the stand. Just a little bit of a floral detail. And then on the inside, you can see that the inside yoke is a contrasting fabric from the outside yoke. But take a look at what's on top of that pattern, and that's another embroidery. I just love this, and that's in a paisley design. Um, paisleys are a big thing with Robert Graham. You can go to the Robert Graham site website and study some of the uh, shirts. You can go to eBay and see them. Every one of them is just fascinating to look at. So that is the first shirt with its details. Also in that same article is how to do this shirt. Now this is our Zen shirt from our Now in Zen pattern. And the identifying feature of the Zen shirt is this double collar. And one collar, which is the outer collar, is a little bit higher than the inner collar. 
So I like to wear this with the inner collar standing up and the outer collar, collar turned down. There's a little loop and button if you choose to button it clear up and you already know how to do the loops because we talked about that, I don't know, a week or two ago, I've sort of lost track. But essentially I made this fabric. So I started out with the striped fabric and then these orange portions are actually insertions. So you can see from the wrong side how I've sliced the pattern and inserted a bit of a paisley fabric. And then of course the contrasting cuff. And the Zen shirt pattern does not have the double cuff on it. That, that is what you can learn from the threads article featuring this garment. But it's actually just the same pattern pieces as the collar, of course a different length, but the same widths and the fact that one is longer and one is shorter. So tying the two details together from the collar to the cuff is an interesting thing. And then in the back there is a pleat, an inverted pleat, and again I inserted the contrasting fabric as just the inverted part of the pleat. So you get a little peeking out of that contrasting fabric. So that's the Zen from the Now and Zen shirt pattern. This one is has some other details that are very um, Robert Graham. Again, contrasting collar and stand, under collar and stand. And then the inside, just the edges, just the ends of the stand are in a contrasting fabric. And then that's separated by a little strip of ribbon. So obviously that inner stand was constructed first before it was attached to the garment. And then a contrasting cuff with that same ribbon detail that helps that cuff stay folded up right on the edge of that ribbon. But I think one of the most interesting features, and very Robert Graham, is this hemline. So you have the vertical stripe of the shirt, and then I've changed the direction of the stripe, cut off a bit of the pattern, and added a band back to its original, original length. And you see the, the shaping there because I've changed directions of the stripe. And then again, the ribbon is on the under lap. So you don't always see it, it just peeks out every once in a while. This one, this is the bells of the bells and whistles pattern and this is the one that is featured in the free download on Threads Magazine's site. And in that site you learn how to do this bit of hem. So this is a, a pretty classic shirt tail hem that's been hemmed first and then all I did was cover a portion of the hem in some fabric. It's like binding in a way, but it's really an overlay, it's not inserted. And then this little triangle is right at the side seam just as a detail, but again the contrasting fabric. This brown fabric actually has kitchen food and tools on it and so by breaking it up you know you can't see that. This is the way the pattern is though with these double, this double uh, band. This is the button placket and notice the contrasting single button in blue. That's very Robert Graham. This is a separate tab that does have buttonholes that can be buttoned up to create a little loop or it can be left long. Two different fabrics now on the collar and stand. Under collar is one fabric, the stand is another. And then that's been repeated for the uh, trim on the sleeve and the under cuff is the same as the under collar. But in the tutorial that Threads gives you, is how to do this hem. And the name of it is Spruce Up Your Shirt Hem. And this is the bells.
Now, if you're not into lots of really fine details, you could think about just really combining a couple of fabrics. This is our Riviera shirt pattern in the short version. There are two lengths, the short and the long. This is the short. This happens to be K Facets shot cotton, meaning that it is uh, iridescent. One lengthwise uh, fiber is purple, and the crosswise is probably red. I'm not sure. And then, of course, his woven stripes, I think, are fantastic. Now, these are quilting cottons, theoretically, but I think they're really a beautiful fabric. We don't carry them, but I know a lot of quilt stores do, so you might want to check out K Facets fabric. But just a little bit of detail. One side in the stripe of the front, the other side is solid, and then bringing that stripe back into a sleeve, using a French seam on the outside of the garment so it has some detail and texture to it. And of course, the collar and stand is in the stripe as well. So that's our Riviera shirt. Okay. So, in, I can't believe it was this long ago, but in 1997, <laughs> I wrote a book on making slip covers. And I remember making about 50 slip covers for furniture. I made the slip covers here in Topeka. We shipped the sl sh slip covers and furniture back to New York where they were photographed and then I wrote the text for the book. This is a book produced by Sunset, which I think they produce beautiful magazines and books. Uh, this book is no longer in print, but you can buy it on eBay, you can buy it at Thrift Books, so it's still available. But the point of showing you this is two things. My daughter Alex is flying back to Kansas from Cleveland this Sunday. She's moving into a new apartment in Cleveland, so she is packing up her stuff that's been here a couple of years, and we're hauling it back to Cleveland to help set up her new apartment. And she has a chair in the basement that I'm going to slip cover, and so I went back to my old book, and the slip cover needs some cording. Cording there are some tricks to cording, and there are some details in this book about how to uh, deal with covered piping or cording, whatever you, your term is. So I'm in a slipcover kind of mode, which puts me in a cording kind of mood. And it reminds me that in the 2000, this book was written 20 years ago. I can't believe it. It's still a really good selling book. It's still available. It was written for Taunton Press, which is the publishing house that owns Threads. You can buy this book on Amazon for $16, or you can buy it from the Sewing Workshop for $15, and it's signed. We're going to talk about the specials later. But there's an, a whole chapter of many techniques on piping, cording, and tubing. The photography is great. The instructions are simple. I think you might benefit from lots of things, but particularly the piping and cording section in this book. And then in 2004, I wrote So Sensational Pillows also for, well, no, this is not for Taunton. This was for Sixth and Spring. The people who owned Butterick Patterns wrote this book, and there's a whole section here on covered piping. If you're used, if you actually are doing slip covers or some sort of a project where the piping needs to be connected, and you don't want to just run it off of the edge in a little diagonal. This gives you the exact technique of how to marry those so that you can't even see the joining. So that's in the So Sensational Pillows book. So back to Robert Graham, back to my husband's shirts. This is just one of my husband's Robert Graham shirts. And I, I love this shirt. I love the fabric. But what I noticed mostly was the fact that these side panels are separated by little tiny piping. Let me hold that up closer. It's really hard to see. And the piping is in a little stripe. I don't think it's in the same fabric, but it doesn't matter. Whenever you cut piping, fabric for piping, it's on the bias, and so a stripe, of course, is going to be on the diagonal. This has the contrasting cuffs. This even has some applied bits along the under lap. Another little fabric here, a little piece of fabric here, a different stripe for the under collar. 
and the famous embroidered yoke. So I don't know about you, but I think these are pretty exciting details. Every once in a while, I toy with the idea of buying a Robert Graham shirt in the hugest size. They come like 4X four, four tall or whatever on eBay or something for not very much money and just tearing them apart so that I have some of the details or can copy it or whatever. So, but this piping really intrigued me. So, I took our Whistles shirt pattern and that happens to be the pattern that I have on. Whistles normally has these little flanges on both the front and the back. But I took the flanges off and just used a striped fabric, a regular button front to it. But notice that I created the side panels much like the Robert Graham and inserted some baby piping. Now I used a silk print for the covering of the cording. Use the same silk for the fold back cuffs and the under collar. And then another little signature detail is to have a little placket where the button is sewn and you just see a little bit of it peeking out at the overlapping front. So this is the whistles and I'm going to show you how to do the baby piping, how to make it and how to apply it. All right. First of all, you might think about getting a special presser foot. There are presser feet that are meant for sewing cording, but the little carve out on or or um, I guess carve out on the bottom of the foot is generally for regular sized piping, but I want to use baby piping. So I purchased a special foot that is not for piping, but it works great for a little bit, little bitty piping. And that is called a three groove pin tuck foot. Now this is Bernina language. So if you own another brand, you're going to have to go searching for what they have, but I'm fairly certain that most people, most brands have pin tuck feet available. For Bernina, that's number 30, but these are the three grooves that are on the bottom of the foot. So that is a big, big aid. Now what are you going to put on the inside of the piping? Well, you can buy some regular cotton or polyester cord. But I find that the cotton cords get kind of thick and thin and are not very smooth sometimes. Plus it's a little bit hard to find. So I like to use what's called rat tail. And rat tail is, I don't know what it's made of actually, but it is a very flexible tube, very smooth, and it's just the right size for really, really tiny baby piping. And you can buy this uh, by the yard in a lot of places. Uh, so find yourself some rat tail or any kind of cording. And I start by wrapping a piece of fabric around whatever I'm going to use, let's say the rat tail. And I cut and so that I know how wide to cut my bias strip. And I usually am generous with that. I cut it wider. But I don't know how wide to make it until I actually fit the rat tail inside of a strip of bias, pinching it, and then measuring how much I need. So you can see here, I cut this wider. All right, so now I'm going to nestle that rat tail in the center of the fold. I'm wrong sides together on the fabric. And I'm just going to run this presser foot right down. There's just, it's just a no-brainer now. I don't have to manipulate this. I don't have to worry about how close I am. I'm moving my needle position a little bit away from the, the filling, the rat tail, because I want to be able to sew closer to it when I'm actually inserting it. But before I even, so I do that, I sew it first, and then I take my seam gauge, which is 5 eighths of an inch wide, and I nestle it right next to 
the stitching and right next to the piping, and that's when I know where to cut my 5 eighths of an inch now. And I do that with a rotary cutter, so I have a nice smooth edge and an even 5 eighths of an inch, or whatever the seam allowance is that you're working with. So then I'm going to sew this to my edge, and I'm just going to line up all my raw edges, and I'm going to use the same foot and the same needle position to just sew that down. So then when I am, I'm going to move this just a bit. So then when I'm going to sew the corresponding piece on, I bet you already know what I'm going to say because I say this all the time. I'm not going to sew blind. I'm going to turn this over and sew on the side where I can see the previous stitching. I'm going to use the same foot that will nestle right over the cord, but I'm going to move my needle position to the left one little tick so that I'm hiding the stitching of the previous stitch line and it will nestle that piping in there just perfectly. So that is baby piping. All right. One other tool that I like to use uh, in shirt making is the buttonhole cutter. We sell a set of buttonhole cutter that also has an awl. So it has the little wood block, it's in the shape of an apple. It has a nice chiseled end to the buttonhole cutter. And so when I am putting this through the fabric, through the buttonhole, because of the chisel, I never cut any of the little threads, either along the edges or at the ends. I've watched so many people dig with their little scissors or a ripper, which scares me to death. So this is a really, really great tool. I don't know how I could live without this, actually. I've actually worn out in my lifetime a couple of wood blocks that I finally just have to throw away and start over. But this is a great tool to have, and I think for if you're a shirt maker, or really if you're just making buttonholes in any fabric, it doesn't matter whether it's shirts or heavy wool or a silk chiffon, you have to have one of those cutters. So let's look at some fabrics. Shirtings and men's shirtings generally are woven stripes. There's a big difference between printed stripes and woven stripes. So I have some stripes here. I want to get this one down because this one up close is really beautiful. So it's a light pink and it has a red and a blue and a green pinstripe to it. And you can see that it's woven it's because the stripes are on both sides. The fabric is essentially the same on the right side and the wrong side. We get these shirtings from a manufacturer of really fine shirts. So they're fantastic shirtings. All right, so what would Robert Graham do? Robert Graham would incorporate some other uh, prints with it. This little mini print I think is fabulous with it in the dark blue background with pink, orange, and yellow little flowers. I think this linen stripe goes well with it, or it could be the shirting itself, but also a trim with it as well. Because remember, Robert Graham combines paisleys, florals, other stripes, all in one. This is a brand new fabric that we just got in this week, actually. That's a nice printed cotton in a little mini print. And then here's another stripe in linen that I think I could see a shirt in all of those fabrics together, or a shirt in this, a shirt in this, a shirt in this, with a touch of some of the other fabrics. This is a fabric that uh, we've had for a while because we had so many yardage, so many yards of it. It was a, for a project for Bernina uh, some time ago, and we had hundreds and hundreds of yards of it, and we just have this much left. But this is a beautiful, beautiful cotton shirting with this pale, these pale tones of taupe and pink and cream and even a hint of aqua and I think that goes as well with all of these. But the hand of this is exquisite. 
Now we have this. This is similar to this. It's about as close as I could get. Uh, I've been searching for something similar for a while, and this is a very fine cotton shirting as well. It has a little bit of a placé or movement to one of the stripes, which I like very much. And then I can see a shirt out of the plaid, but I can for sure see the plaid as a contrast to this stripe. And this is a beautiful shirting as well from the same shirt manufacturer that we get some of the other shirtings from, but a beautiful soft hand. It's woven. Both of these are woven. And then this is so Robert Graham with the paisley. I love these three together. Punch it with a little bit of printed red orange. And then even go further. This fabric, I know you can't see this, but it has little tiny fish on it. And I don't know if you like fish or not, but you can't really tell that they're fish until you look up close. But again, a really beautiful soft hand of cotton. Another shirting that's probably going to get lost, I have to say, in the translation on Facebook Live, but this is very similar to the, very, the second shirt that I showed you. Beautiful stripe in gold and taupe with a teeny tiny bit of, an, of a rusty orange to it. But again, this classic men's shirting, crisp but drapey, easy to sew. And I like this. Now I'm going to have to do a little, might have to have Aaron come over here. We'll see. Um, okay, so how many of these? You, you hold this, Aaron. All right. Okay, so we have a shirting from Burberry. Doesn't get any better than Burberry. I can see mixing that with this green in the little floral. And then, of course, Liberty of London. The cottons from Liberty of London are like none other. There's a nice combination of a couple of prints with this. Or you can switch to a more blue tone. And it's pinned, of course. You got it? All right. All right. So another Liberty of London, where if you want to bring in another colorway of some blues and greens and the beiges and neutrals, that's beautiful. So you have to, you have to kind of go for it with this whole shirting, Robert Graham mixture of, of fabrics. I've noticed recently that there are other menswear shirt companies who are getting on the bandwagon of the Robert Graham thing, from Calvin Klein to other brands that I can't remember at the moment. But it's, it's more common now. It's not just that Robert Graham signature thing. It's, obviously, he's been copied by a lot of other designers as well. So I th do we have any questions? We did have a question about mixing the fabrics. Like, would you mix a shirting with a linen, with a uh, print, with, you know? Yeah, would I mix the fabrics in terms of fiber and pattern as well? And the answer is yes. I, as I said on this one, I mixed cotton with silk. I would mix cotton with linen. You know, the hand is very similar. And so, to me, you're just using small portions of some of these fabrics. Absolutely, I would mix them. Have you ever tried to make piping using a cording foot on a serger? Have I ever tried to make piping using a cording foot on a serger? Yes, I have. It's been a long time. I know that you can make super, super skinny piping that way. Um, but honestly, I'm not an expert at that, and it's been a long time since I've done it. But I know it can be done. Whether um, these pink ones, whether they had border on both sides. All right. The question is whether these fabrics have borders on both sides, and the answer is no. This one has a more solid edging to it, but it's not the same border as this one. So this is a one border print. And the other one, I believe, is as well, but let's take a look. This has one border that has the script. I'm not sure it's a script or a, a pencil or a pen or brush stroke to it. And this has a border, but it's different. 
And that's more of an orange tangerine blurred border to it. And, uh, what is the fabric of your blouse? The fabric of my blouse is cotton. And it's a cotton shirting. It is a print. Um, the only little ode to Robert Graham on this pattern or this garment that I made is a contrasting yellow button. Um, they asked um, what you would make out of these Japanese fabrics. You... What would I make out of these Japanese fabrics? I would make any of the shirts that I've just shown. I would make the whistles, the, the uh, bells, fantastic Riviera. Um, I always struggle when I'm on the, the Sienna and Cortona. Why don't you hand me that Sienna there uh, that's just hanging right here. I was going to show this and then I thought, well, I don't want to overwhelm everybody. But this is a Sienna shirt that's in some mixed fabrics. This is a blue and white striped shirting with another print fabric, uh, an, an embroidered cotton. So uh, this is a good example of really mixing the weights of fabrics. But this is a Sienna, so that would make a great one. You could use that border, for example, either as a front panel or a side panel or the sleeves. That'd be a great pattern for that, either one of those border prints. Um, are any of the shirting fabrics wrinkle are any of the shirting fabrics wrinkle-free? The answer is no. They're cotton, they're linen, they're going to wrinkle. Now, I have to, you know, some of them probably wrinkle less than others. This one is not going to wrinkle too much. There's already a placé, meaning wavy stripe to it. Um, and some you're not going to see as much. But it's, it's just standard for cotton to wrinkle some. Some wrinkle more than others, but none of them are wrinkle-free. And how would you care for the Japanese linens? How would I care for the Japanese linens? I would throw them in the washing machine, cold water. I would take a sample first, maybe a four-inch square or so, throw it in the washing machine on hot, dry it, and see what happens. But chances are I'm going to carefully launder it in my washing machine and maybe dry it by hanging or or in the dryer. I would have to see what happens to my sample, but probably it's fine. Um, did you match the stripes on the shirts behind you? Did I match the stripes on the shirt behind me? Um, at the side seam, maybe? I don't know. Well, I guess there's no, um, there, there's no matching because it's a vertical stripe, but on when I did the uh, mitering on the side, I did match it. But at the shoulders, I did not. Neither did Robert Graham, by the way. Well, that's, that's an interesting, let me show you this, though. This is traditional for men's shirtings. I've always thought this was very interesting, that they don't bother to match plaids or stripes from the body of the garment to the yoke. Now, in this case, there's a little insertion here of some flat piping. It's not filled. It's flat. But that doesn't match. In fact, this has been turned now that I see it. This is probably cross grain, and this is lengthwise grain. Yeah. Um, would you make a long skirt out of any of these, the Japanese or any of Would I make a long skirt? I would certainly make a long skirt out of any of the Japanese. I would make a long skirt out of this. I don't know about this. This is pretty lightweight. This one, definitely. The fish, yes. Uh, this, for sure. In fact, we have a skirt out of this fabric that's fantastic. Definitely the, so I would say definitely the linens, the two linens. The two floral prints, the paisley, this stripe, the fish, and all of the Japanese. I think we'd make great skirts. Do you agree with that, Erin? I think so. I think. Yeah. Um, and we had somebody else asking about like tunics, like Berwicks. And oh, yes. Like yeah, these are perfect fabrics for the Berwicks, the tunics, San Diego tunic, Berwick Street tunic. Um, we've. 
The fish one? Yeah. Here's the fish up close. You can see how nice and drapey it is. This would make a great Berwick Street tunic. And then we've turned the Sienna into to tunics as well. I think we showed that a few sessions ago. What else is a tunic? Um, The Florence would make a great mm -hmm. tunic in any of these. The Florence shirt actually has a lot of elements to it that, where you could have some fun with some contrast because it has a placket down the back, has a placket down the front, has a collar and stand, has a, an interesting pocket that is sheared, has a cuff, has all the elements of a shirt. It's just a long shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been a good one to do that on. <laughs> well, the Venice would be good. The Venice would be good, yes, yes. Well, we did have one question about what I'm wearing, but it's not. Erin uh, is wearing something that she... Is not. Uh, we have no idea where that came from. What <laughs> flea market that came from. <laughs> no. No, no, no. No, the only reason I say that, it's very, um, it's very beachy. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like something you might have bought on vacation. Is that true? No. No? Okay. <laughs> All right, that's all the questions for now. And speaking of questions, uh, next Tuesday is question day. We've been kind of gearing up for this for a while. I have collected the questions that you've sent uh, up to now. And if you have more questions, please email Betsy at sewingworkshop.com or post them on Facebook. We'll pick up on that. What I'm not going to be able to answer in a live Facebook Live next week is a very personal fitting sort of thing. So maybe if we can steer clear of that. But if you have fabric questions, pattern questions, detail questions, I think those would be great topics for next Tuesday. Um, we do have some specials, so we have to talk about that. Seems like there was something I was going to say right before questions. It's gone. All right. So um, the bells and whistles pattern. This one and this one are all in the same pattern. This is $18. It's a printed pattern. The Now and Zen, I'm only showing the Zen here, but there's another style in the pattern called the Now. That is $18. And the Riviera, we have put on sale for $8. It's a printed pattern. But if you send in an order for anything, notions, books, fabrics, tutorials, whatever it is, if it's over $100, you will get a free Riviera in your package. Now, don't expect this to show up in your list of things that you've ordered. We know that when we spot an order that's over $100, this just gets put in your box. So don't worry. We'll, we'll find it and we will make sure you get this pattern. But you're not going to order it, and you're not going to see it show up in your cart. So those are the patterns. The buttonhole cutter set is $6.50. My Edges and Corners book, which will be signed for you, is $15. And then we have three really good tutorials that relate to all of these topics today. How to make the perfect sleeve placket. And it gives you the template of how to draw this. If you own a book called Shirt Making by David Coffin, you're going to see his template in that book, and it's a good template. And we have borrowed that template basically and applied it to a tutorial and it makes a, the perfect template. Sometimes the template patterns and shirt patterns aren't that great. This one works and we give you detailed instructions in the sleeve placket. And it also gives you um, not just this sort of applied placket but how to do the kind of little um, bias uh, covering of the edges of a split V. So there's two or three different kinds of plackets in that tutorial. We have a collars and stands, collar and stands, collar and stand, I'm not sure if it's plural or single, doesn't matter, you'll find it, 
uh, tutorial and we have two different methods of applying a collar and a stand. The more traditional method and a more new age method, I'll call it. And then we have a tutorial on small hems. How to do baby hems, shirt tail hems, curved hems, all kinds of tricks of how to get really good, perfect, narrow hems. So the three tutorials are now $15 each. And when you order, you need to be sure and order through your account or set one up so that these tutorials land in your account immediately. And you can download them to watch them or you can print them off. They're a PDF and you can put them in a, a notebook or a volume. So be sure and always order on our website through your account. There's one question, if you could hold up that green fabric. A question about the green fabric? Mm -hmm. Just to hold it up. So okay, it here it is. Down. This is the Burberry fabric. It even says Burberry somewhere in here. I always have to spot it. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought it said that. But at any rate, nice cotton. Okay. All right. Well, send in your questions. We'll look for you next week. Thanks so much.